thank you so much dr sundaram for joining us so uh, to start to talk talk a bit about the situation in tamil nadu we know that it is one of the states with pretty good health facilities in fact it's actually a center for what is called medical tourism people from various parts of the world come there for treatment it also is has been known for a fairly efficient bureaucratic system at least in the past they have the state has dealt with disasters but right now there seems to be a lot of confusion on the ground and uh, the lockdown is going to be reimposed in four districts as uh, so is this a question of a particular extra level of uh, mismanagement or is it some, some people are of course saying that tamil nadu is actually ahead of the curve in declaring this and other parts might even have to. so how do you see the situation right now in tamil nadu i don't think tamil nadu is ahead of the curve mm -hmm. i think bombay and delhi have uh, declared their additional deaths the missing deaths mm -hmm. i think looking at tamil nadu uh, figures that they would also have something to declare i would not be surprised if they there is a death correction from there the current death figures are too low and uh, part of it is the convergence problem that bombay and delhi had so the death figures will high but in practice it would be much higher but relative to other states what they are saying is the same trend so we are not saying too much but this projection of tamil nadu as a uh, unusually low mortality that mm -hmm. i don't think we need to go with that it's just a bit of hype but it's not a unusually high mortality either mm -hmm. the virus does what the virus does and it does not make any particular concession for tamilians or uh, uh, this, that's particularly the situation we are right. as a health system tamil nadu is a very robust health system i think we should not lose sight of that despite some of the gaps that have occurred on this tamilnad has had some health system has had some fault lines those fault lines tend to get exacerbated by this covid 19 that has this tendency to take up and catch you on whatever weak point you have and press it there one of the fault lines of tamilnad is other than its high degrees of inequity which people do not quite recognize it's very much higher in tamilnad compared to many states there has a very high inequity problem and the problem could be in a level of denial of the existence of inequity the other big problem is its tamil nadu health system is very bureaucratically driven very administratively driven very very limited or no role for panchayats and for community engagement in the corporations where the problem is worst there are no corporate electors there are no corporate councillors there are no ward members there is nobody who can speak for the community now this is very traditional they pride themselves on administration and they are good administrators i would say i have experienced it elsewhere also a very good in their the public health departments the one of the most competent departments but they don't have community engagement and here is a situation where it actually needs it's interesting that just before this pandemic broke they were thinking of correcting that mm -hmm. that weakness they were conscious of it but i think this caught them on the thing so the first one month if you look at march tamil nadu performed admirably well it was on par with kerala somewhere it got diverted and distracted by saying this tabligh muslims are the only people having it 90% of cases are from them even then i was scared that you have just not looking elsewhere and true enough when they started looking into elsewhere the coimbedu flare up occurred and there were other chains of transmission it was impossible whatever the problems with that group it was impossible that there is only one chain of transmission that can account for 90% of cases clearly they were not looking and therefore when they started looking they found the chennai cluster which by then had gone out of proportions unlike what you had in bangalore and in uh, trivandrum where they were able to be on top of the problem all the time so they were actually on the lookout for it so there was this particular and chennai corporation doesn't have some of the rural structures that are necessary for community engagement they do not necessary for primary primary care and therefore the tamil nadu the chennai situation kept running out also chennai is one of the busy airports lots of points of entry the february thing so these factors put together remember but that period of march which you saw the bombay was already peaking tamil nadu was not doing very badly 
It was actually subsequently they attributed to the market, but it could have been any number of markets. The fish market was also doing the same thing. So it was the, but it was somewhere that later that they did that. And then when it came to contact tracing, when it came to this, there was a, shall I say, an undue keenness on uh, forcing the figures to remain low at the cost of a wider testing. Particularly, one problem happened, which I think Taminat uh, really paid uh, very much for, is that uh, in the pursuit of keeping deaths low and numbers low, there was, I think, a substantial number of cases that we were hearing who were denied uh, admission because they were too sick, not all the sick people getting tested for COVID-19, a certain uh, uh, keeping up a narrative which I think they have currently corrected because after this new secretary, you see the death rates are much more realistic. I'm not saying they are high. People will immediately say, now you have 49, 15 deaths. There were 18 deaths before. Those 18 deaths before were a problem. They represented partly people who were not documented, but partly who were turned away at the door and that means they would be a source of spread. So imagine 2,000 cases coming from day. If they are in search of care and they visit one, two, three, four places before they get admission, each patient will himself infect a hundred people. That means not infect, they would come into contact with a hundred people. So you would have uh, two lakh contacts for the current number of cases per day. So it's extremely important that when a patient has symptoms, he reaches care without getting into contact with anything else in the surrounding. That, I think, remains a weak spot. So I think that is part of the reasons why Chennai uh, was this. Also, a lot of distractors, a lot of effort going into unproductive uh, types of control. Mm -hmm. places. You, you have a, a curfew after 7 p.m. in the night. You lock down geographically a zone and declare a buffer zone. That was Chennai's great solution. They invented it, but thoroughly, thoroughly did not help because they needed contact tracing, which was a, not a police function. It was a community function and they did not and have not yet got enough community volunteers on this. So that's, I think, one set of problems. The other set is rising. The problem is not already there, but the problem is rising. The districts. Now, the districts have very limited cases. So here are situations, never mind, Chennai is a big place, twice as big as South Korea. So it can take each district separately and make sure the disease is contained there. But the surveillance systems in the districts are weak. So if you have a good surveillance, you'll catch the clusters when you are small, implement contact tracing and isolation measures, which will limit it. A lockdown is very inefficient because you cannot know which person is the contact, but a, sim a very focused contact tracing will help contain those cases and keep the districts small. But I am worried that some districts as they start testing are going to show up higher clusters. And then you can have many more Chennai's and that would be very unfortunate because actually they can avoid it. The rural system is much better and they should be able to avoid it. But if they fail to do adequate surveillance testing, which means you must test every person with COVID-like symptoms, whether or not they have a contact history, whether or not they have been, this whole business of community transmission has lulled us from testing people who are symptomatic, but without contact history. So that new clusters can rise unnoticed and become too big. When they are small, you can contain them. When they are large, you need mitigation, extra beds, you have problems of management. That is the danger. They can get out of it. They are on the cusp of it. I think that hopefully in the coming week, they will do something to get that better. So you would not, for instance, recommend, uh, you would not see law, the reimposition of the lockdown as a very efficient solution because like over the past couple of days, there have been similar discussions with regard to Delhi whether it, there is a need for a second lockdown, whether it might actually help stem the cases. So if there is a mouse in the house, you can burn down the house to get to that mouse. And or you can search for the mouse. It may be very difficult, very elusive. 
but uh, eventually when you burn it down the mouse may still survive you see the problem about uh, is you you lockdown is an extreme measure it could may be there uh, there could be cases and circumstances when it is merited i don't want to rule it out prima facie no lockdown but i i, I really think that right now they need to focus on this the thing but i can see in chennai there is some sort of a thing but let us say if there is a political compulsion to go ahead they should at least accompany it but a far far greater intensified contact tracing community engagement using this process of mitigation for that plus build up something like 20000 more beds to be ready for what will happen when the lockdown lifts we are likely to run into lacks because we may not uh, get that in control and we need to get ready for that and i think Uh, we have a problem even now in ventilation management things like that which i think needs to be strengthened so if they use it for doing a health system preparedness that they should have done in april but well everybody is learning i will be charitable about that so they can done health and they intensify testing but if they use the lockdown as a substitute for doing this they are really lost they are really lost then chennai will be in a real soup i hope and i do think that they will not make that mistake thank you so much dr sudhir ramon to talk to us thank you